We all live in the digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Good morning, everybody. I don't know where you are. Uh, Claudia, good morning. Good morning. Now I'm here. Hi. Good stuff. Claudia, you're from? From Berlin. I'm uh, at the Federal Ministry of, for Families. Great. Great, Claudia. We have a number of participants here this morning. I think we have a total of 15 at the moment, 14 at the moment. So um, my presentation will start in just a second. We'll give people one or two minutes to jump in and uh, then we'll get this whole party started. Um, just, just while we're waiting, um, and rather than repeat, because you're going to hear a lot of stuff from me, uh, from today's presentation, what are you looking for? What information would you like to learn? Uh, um, weren't expecting that question. No, I wasn't expecting the question. Um, well, I'm not going to put you on the spot. Hold that thought, and when we get to the end of the presentation, we'll come back to it. So, um, okay. we're just in a minute past the hour. So, Claudia, could you do me a favor? Could you disable your video? And we'll just jump in because otherwise, I'm not sure how the, when the screen share kicks in, when that, that will happen. So um, we'll just give it another minute to allow one or two more people. Um, and I'm just looking to see if there's anybody in the audience that I know. And there isn't. That means I can tell you loads of lies and nobody will know anything any different. So just bear with me two seconds and we'll do a little countdown. Just get my presentation set up. And if the computer will do its magic. Now, Claudio, uh, Claudia, if you could tell me, can you see my presentation with the word in open screen? Yes, I can see everything. Thank you. OK, perfect. Perfect, perfect. Great. So um, what we'll do is I just want to check uh, one thing on the chat. Uh, Great. So, guys, what I'm going to do is get started with this morning's presentation. Um, and really, uh, I'll do the presentation and then we will do any Q&A afterwards and that kind of stuff. So, um, with that said, um, my name is uh, Denton Howard and I am the Executive Director of InHope, which is the International Association of Internet Hotlines. Um, I had planned to be in Katowice, as I think probably many people who are sitting here this morning also intended to be there, uh, to meet people in person, to meet colleagues, to share a coffee and hopefully a beer. But sadly, along with most other people, due to the COVID situation, um, our travel plans had to be curtailed at relatively short notice. Uh, my plans only changed last week. Um, so now that we've moved uh, this uh, lightning talk online uh, hopefully that the technology uh, will allow me to convey the information and ideas that i want to share with you today that that hopefully you can take that knowledge and apply it to your own environment your own legislative area or your own policy area so um the, t the title of my lightning presentation um is rapid notice and takedown uh, the key to getting child sexual abuse material off the internet fast. Now, I, I chose this title, uh, one, it, it sounds snappy, and, and I had a publication deadline, but uh, just like lightning, uh, the, 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 my presentation will be fast, hopefully a little scary, and also make a, a small impression, or a major impression maybe even, but um, joking or being lightness aside, I, I want to articulate the scale of child sexual abuse material that is online and how by working together with uh, relevant stakeholders efficiently and in a coordinated way, we can basically make the internet a safer place, a better place, um, 
by getting the material offline as fast as is possible. And I consciously use the word rapid a lot. Okay, and you'll understand why uh, towards the end of my presentation. So um, before we dive into the detail, um, because I, I don't know what everybody's level of knowledge is. So for the purposes of, of this, I, I'm going to assume that you have no knowledge or background in this subject area. Um, so with that said, um, I, I want to get into uh, sort of address the question about, well, what is child sexual abuse material? And you may think you know, but sometimes it, it needs to be very, very clear. Um, so first and foremost, and it, I'm sorry to be very blunt, at where I am at the moment, it's eight o'clock in the morning, so I don't know where, what time it is where you are, but child sexual abuse material, or CSAM, which is the acronym that we use continuously, is the recorded sexual abuse of a child. Uh, CSAM can be on a video, it can be on an image, it can be sometimes in an audio format, and it, what's illegal depends on where you sit. There's certain countries have different legislative approaches, um, but it is really, really important, and I cannot stress this enough, that behind every image and statistic that you might hear, a number that you might hear, or icon on a screen that you might see, there's a child who is a victim, and they should be at the center of everything that we talk about and everything that we do. But also, I mean, we all see the lovely picture of the kid and the victim, but we have to remember there is also perpetrators. Um, and the perpetrators are the people who do the bad things to the child. And I know it sounds overly simplistic, but it is really important to strike that home. So um, I, I'm going to repeat what I just said, just to make sure that it's clear on everybody. It's, the, and it's important here, the recorded sexual abuse of a child. Again, uh, it takes a victim and it takes perpetra a perpetrator or perpetrators to do it to that child. So each instance okay, of CSAM uh, can be copied and shared an infinite number of times. We can create a million copies of a file literally at the um, four clicks of a button. Um, and, and so the point is, we can also then share that to an infinite number of uh, locations um, on an infinite number of countries, in effect, and well, not infinite, but hundreds of countries, um, again, in a very short period of time. Uh, our objective is to stop this as quickly as possible when we become aware of it via what we call notice and takedown. And I'll explain that in detail in a little minute. So. We also want to get to the root file so that we can get that removed. And again, the why I'll come to in a moment. So you may hear um, certain people from uh, 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 privacy rights or people who have, uh, um, should we say, questionable interests um, saying that viewing child sex abuse is, is not a crime. Um, well. I just want to tell you, viewing child online child sexual abuse material is not a victimless crime. Crime, a video or a, a video of the abuse of a child is is a crime scene, and it's really important that you get that idea because uh, the each time that video or, or image is shared or viewed, that person is in effect abused uh, again, and the person that's viewing is abusing that child again. So we use the term re-victimization. Um, and CSAM that is shared online results in that being a continuous process of re-abuse. Um, and again, the, the cycle continues each time it's copied, each time it's reshared. Um, and th that is just unbelievably traumatic for many victims who may be able to come to terms with the actual physical abuse that happened to them. But the fact that it is, the recording is constantly being reshared and rehappening is, is beyond uh, what a lot of people can handle. So um, with that in mind, for the victim, uh, we can't undo um, the, the really terrible and unspeakable things that have happened to that child, but we can try to stop the recording of your abuse from being reshared and redistributed. Um, and also, and again, we, we always hoped this objective, but and potentially we always hope that a child can be rescued from the perpetrator or in, in a, from a difficult environment or from a situation where they are being taken advantage of. Now, um, 
the iconography that I've used on screen is 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 kind of of, of generic um, because normally when I, I I give presentations on child sex abuse material, and I say this in 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 the loudest possible terms, we never ever show images of CSAM, um, or identify any victims. Okay, so that the victims are well. Obviously, you can't share CSAM because that would be illegal and it would be improper, and we would absolutely never do it. And, and equally, by the way, my job, the beauty of it is that uh, while I do have to go to environments where child sex abuse is analysed, thankfully, I, I have the, the, the benefit of I support and um, um, enable people who have to do the analysis of that content. But I'm lucky that I don't have to deal with it because personally, I, I wouldn't be emotionally equipped to do the, the really tough job that analysts have to do. And I'll come back to that point in a little while. So. Um, we never ever show images, um, and we, we we just it's 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 unnecessary, and we never identify victims, and it's also disrespectful, disrespectful, and that applies across the board, but with one exception, and I want to talk to you about that, and the one exception is this. Um, the 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 face of the child that you see there is uh, a child called Thea uh, Pumbroke. I always pronounce her surname incorrectly, but um, I'm sure people will understand. Now, I, I can show you this because it's in the public record. Um, it's, it's in the public domain, although you may have a problem finding it on the internet. Because she died in 1984, when she was six years old, in the Holiday Inn in Eindhoven in the Netherlands. She died of a drug overdose administered to her during the recording of her being sexually abused in 1984. Now, I know you're all intelligent people, but that was 37 years ago. And I have to say, images and videos of Thea being abused are still shared online today. That's 37 years. Now, if you can imagine images, and which wouldn't be great quality in terms of the video and all that kind of stuff, uh, if people are still sharing that, they're also sharing everything else that they can get their hands on. And I refer to people who have a sexual interest in children. Now, I, I'm doing, doing this to just draw your attention to it. Rather than it being a statistic or a, an image or an icon on the screen, there are people behind this. Um, now, I, I won't go on about this, but I just want to draw your attention to uh, an article um, written by a, a very good colleague of mine, Mick Moran. And what happened to Thea and the implications. So it's mcmoran.eu, or you can you can find them on LinkedIn and it's published there. So my, my, my point re really is to draw your attention to the, the, the key issue of the material. So with this in mind, uh, while we can't change what happened to Thea, okay, we can try and get the content of her and the thousands and hundreds of thousands of other victims out there and get it removed as quickly as possible. And that is why. Notice and takedown is so important. And that is the process of getting the content taken offline. Um, now, when I get into this, I'm not sure what everybody's level of technical knowledge is. So I'm keeping it to basic principles for everyone. So um, we can get into technical questions at the end if anybody really wants to deep dive. So um, with that said, hopefully I've scared you a little bit. Um, and hopefully you all had to take a mouthful of coffee to sort of understand, oh my God, that's terrible. And I, if, you've, if I've achieved that objective, well, uh, that's a success. Um, but uh, as I said earlier, I, I, now I want to just give you a little bit of background to, now I've told you the issue and the, and the problem, now I'm going to address how we get it, how we deal with it. So as I said, I'm the executive director of InHope. Now InHope is a global network of hotlines, or in some countries, like in, in the United States and in Canada, it's known as a tip line. Um, so currently, in hope is 46 member hotlines in 41 countries and i'm very glad to say that next week on the 15th that number will increase to 50. we have four new hotlines joining the network um, and and this is a fairly momentous to, to break the half century mark um, because we we originally started in 1999 with six so it's been um it's it's, it's a great it's, it's a great week to announce that information but as a network uh, we provide a collective um, services to hotlines around the world and connect them together. And that includes technology platforms, which you'll hear about, capacity building, training, best practices, representation, coordination, and, and many other aspects and elements 
uh, to support Highlands in, in their mission, and which is also our mission, which is to detect and remove child sexual abuse from the digital environment. Now, I don't know if you noticed something, but I just said the word digital environment. I didn't say internet. Um, and the reason we say that is because the world and technologies and platforms are changing all of the time. And the internet is just a piece of hardware. It's a, it's a network of networks. Then it evolved into what we commonly know as the World Wide Web. But then we have newer technologies which are constantly coming forward all of the time. So it's a, it's a terminology change that I'm using. And I think I would recommend others to start changing the, 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 the way things are worded because um, it means if something isn't on the internet specifically, well, then it mightn't be of other people's concerns. So it's important that that changes. Anything you can see on the screen, it should be what we're all concerned about. So rather than wrap it on, I just want to say, if you want more information on this, please go to inhope.org and familiarize yourself with what we do, where your nearest hotline is, in, and you can select it from whichever country you're coming from, and to learn as much as possible. So. Um, with that said, I just want to give you a little bit of a run through in terms of hotlines and how they work. So hotlines operate on, on a national basis um, and they offer a way for the public to report anonymously um, any online content that they um, feel may be child sexual abuse material or illegal. So the hotlines will assess any reported content and if it's confirmed as illegal, or CSAM, they will in the first instance work to get that content removed. Um, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But they will also advise all of their law enforcement partners and gather all the relevant data. Because again, I mentioned the point that this, when we talk about something, a child abuse instance, uh, that is in effect a recording of a crime scene. And that's really important to remember. And police forces, uh, uh, police officers in general do a brilliant job and they work very hard to identify victims and bring perpetrators, you know, I, I, we often use the term to justice, but it's important that they get prosecuted because ultimately the more pro perpetrators that are prosecuted, the less abuse and the more fear is out there in that community. Maybe they were people who would not necessarily commit. Um, so um, once that's done, we need to, they advise their law enforcement partners. Um, they also, uh, hotlines have to work closely to be organized in a country because a hotline is dealing with the equivalent of the nuclear waste of the internet. So it can't, you just can't go and do it yourself. It has to be a, an organization through an organization that is recognized and acknowledged by government in a country, by law enforcement, by child welfare, and by industry. But there's many reasons for that because obviously the police and the government don't want necessarily independent organizations going around just handling child sex abuse material, but equally, um, we need, you need to have the coordination uh, with the child welfare organizations to make sure that the rights of victims are being protected. And then equally with industry, it's really important um, because to get content removed rapidly, you need to know who to call. You need to build relationships with that, that industry. So with that said, when we talk about hotlines, they come in many different shapes and sizes. And generally speaking, it's, it, you can gauge it by population size. So obviously, biggest population tends to have the biggest hotlines at scale, and likewise, the smallest population tend to have the smallest scale. Um, they are run by or organized through a variety of different models. Some are run by uh, non-governmental organizations. Um, some are run by industry bodies like uh, ISP associations. Some are run by government um, uh, organizations like uh, communications regulators. And there are a number which are hybrids of all three. So again, they, there isn't one size fits all, but the one thing to do is everybody shares the common mission, which is again, combating online child sex abuse material. And equally, they agree to abide by all of the common practices and technologies and, and all of the other good stuff that we do. Um, because with a network, it's really important that everybody does the same process um, because that way the whole thing speeds up. So with that said, obviously the internet is a global um, network and sadly so is child sex abuse material. So when I say that um, child sex abuse material reports, when it becomes reported to a hotline, it's nearly always hosted somewhere else. So um, we talk about borders and different jurisdictions, but when we talk about maps, maps are just lines, or borders are just lines drawn on a map by somebody. The internet does not recognize that. So consequently, 
we need a way of sharing that information across borders rapidly. And that's why in hope as a when we say we're global, the reason we say global is because we're on every continent in the world, um, because we have to match the hosting and the distribution of child sexual abuse material around the world. Now, to enable all of the information to be exchanged in a secure and a safe way, we have an infrastructure that allows that to happen, and that's called ICCAM. I'm going to talk to you briefly about that, but I also want to take note to something which I should have mentioned at the very start. Um, I, I want to just draw reference to the European Commission. Um, the European Commission have been with us since day one in, back in 1999 and have funded a lot of our activities. Um, and in terms of ICCAM, which you're about to see, they were the key funder for this program. And so it, it's vital now. And if it had, they hadn't done that, uh, we simply wouldn't be able to do what we do. Now, I always say that not because they give us money, but because it, it has to be acknowledged the very positive things that it has brought to us. Um, sometimes sort of large government organizations get a bad rap, but I have to, the, the European Commission has been fantastic for us over the years. So with that said, um, I want to get into what they actually paid for. So um, we, with that, we have to talk about time. And you'll notice I've used the icon uh, of the stopwatch. And tempus fugit, meaning time passes. Um, but time passes very quickly. Um, so we're all slaves to the clock. You see the stopwatch icon on the screen. And this is there to make the point that once a report is received and validated, the clock starts. And that clock only stops when that report is closed or offline. So this is the measurement or metric by which hotlines and in hope are measured. So with every improvement we do and make to our systems, we constantly strive to be faster because the speed is the, of the essence of what we do. So really um, with that in said, I wanna to talk to you about time. So in uh, 2020, which was uh, COVID central, um, hotlines in Europe and around the world, when we add up all of those times connected, all of the reports that we received, 75% were removed between zero and three days. That's the first metric that we make. In reality, the vast majority of that 75% happened within 24 hours. But that was done in a landscape where our report numbers increased by 208%. So we improved the speed and equally, even though the volumes doubled. So I just wanna draw that point out to show that the systems, when they become a process and it becomes established, that makes the difference. So, because that is all about exchanging reports between all of the different hotlines around the world. So, how do we do it? Um, in a perfect world, I see, um, <clears throat> sorry, in a perfect world, uh, identified CSAM would be removed at a network level. In other words, and never be reshared, because you may have heard about uh, filtering and blocking and hash technologies. Um, sadly, the, the, the total effect of those, of those systems is not there yet, and there are a number of legal obstacles which are in the, in the process of getting um, covered. And, and, and we hope that this in the future will make a, an even bigger impact of CSAM, but it's only one part of the puzzle because filtering, hashing, blocking only deals with content that has been identified, recorded, and hashed already. It doesn't see any new content. And so really it's important that when reporting comes part of the puzzle, that uh, we get that content offline. So I wanna show in simple terms how we do it on a national and an international basis. And the tool that we do this is with is called ICCAM. And that ICCAM means I see child abuse material. Um, so we receive a public report or a hotline receives a public report, somebody saying that they found what they think is child sexual abuse material. In that, hot, in that country, in, in this case, country A, that a set, that report is assessed by a trained analyst. If it's found to be illegal, a number of things, which we talk is notice and takedown, they will contact the police who will hopefully identify the victim and the offender, potentially affect a rescue. The industry will be contacted and then the content will be removed. Again, the process we know as notice and takedown. So that's really good. And it's a really well-proven system and once there's systems in place, it works really fast. But as I mentioned to you, content is nearly always hosted somewhere else. So 
what happens is the hotline will place that report into the ICCAM system, which is a system which is based in Interpol in Lyon, because obviously we can't have child abuse material just flying reports of flying around the internet and the files are very big and it's not that practical. So the report goes to ICCAM, ICCAM harvest all of the information and makes it available to all the relevant hotlines. So what it does is it tracks down where the content is hosted and then it actually sends that report to the hotline in country B or and sometimes it's country C, D, E and F. It can be multiple countries. Then that receiving hotline will then apply the same process of notice and takedown. They will contact the police. They will hopefully identify offender or victim. And then also the industry partners will be contacted to get that content removed at the same time. Now, that is a really in a nutshell. Now, it's a little more complicated than that, but that is it in a nutshell. But what is important is ICCAM is based in Interpol, but it's our system. But if we identify content which has never been seen before, and we identify content which has never seen before using a type of a hash technology, and so if we have a confirmed child sex abuse material image or video, and it's something that has not been formally identified or listed before in a hash list, Interpol receives that information and that media, and then that helps them to build their victim ID database and also to um, put up their hash list. And then also we have a statistical data from that. And you may, you may have seen the data but in terms of notice and takedown times I mentioned earlier on, and the volumes, all of that kind of stuff. We, we harvest a lot of different data points on this. But it's really important when I talk about time, and I said Tempest Fugit earlier on, each of those stages that I've shown you, each has a time clock to it. And we have to measure that because that's how we see how effective it is. And then we see a situation where notice and takedown is operating twice on both sides of that transaction. Now, again, we can get into the detail a little bit later, but I hope that gives you an idea of how we share that information using technology without the technology none of those reports could be exchanged and we certainly couldn't do it in a secure way i'm sorry by the way that is an instant system it doesn't there's no time delay if i click a button it happens and it's in australia it will instantly appear in australia so while this is a process and uses a lot of technology um hotlines and their activities are actually what a lot of people tend to forget they're powered by people um, and the people who we refer to are analysts uh, who basically every day uh, they see and deal with things that uh, really nobody should ever have to see uh, and then they do it again every other day now the question is why did they do it um, well they do it because they believe in the importance of the mission and i have to say it it, it, it gives me great pride um, meeting these people because i as i mentioned earlier it's a job i don't think i could actually do um, because they believe in the importance of what we actually get done um, and they, it's funny, I've met so many people over the years and they say, well, while well, they can't stop it, they can't stop what's happened. They can't stop that from being constantly being shared on the internet. Now, um, they, 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 they're all very driven people with different motives, but uh, professionalism is the key. Now, I will say one thing, the image that you see on screen is not one of our analysts. It's a stock image because we never identify analysts because obviously the nature of what they have to do. So, um, what, what I want to talk about now is to, to close off today. Um, I want you to take away a number of thoughts. Um, I want you to take away the, the understanding of the importance of action. And I don't mean action in terms of we really should do something, we might do something. It's do something. So don't talk about it, do it. Okay. Um, and it's funny at industry in events that I meet people with. Uh, it's it's funny once you get one person to take on and take it on as a personal mission it's amazing what can be done and achieved um be aware uh, of your and support your national hotline be aware of inhope talk to me i'm about the easiest person in the world to find um and if you can in your role whether you work in industry whether you work in government whether you work in law enforcement whether you just have a, a common technical interest um, wherever you are, please ensure that the process of notice and takedown is simplified or is as simple as possible from a legal perspective because it simply works. It delivers things in a fast way. It protects the rights of victims. And basically, it's effective, okay? In the absence of any other system so far, and we should never say that it, there won't be great solutions coming down the tracks, 
but I'm interested in the now. So um, I said I, my lightning talk would hopefully be fast and it would be quick, but um, at the, this point, I, I wanna close off my presentation. I wanna say thank you very much for your attention. Hopefully you're still in the room um, and I uh, hope you stay safe in our current strange and uncertain times. So I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen and if the button works properly, then we disappear. So um, at, at the moment we have uh, about, I think it's got 10 people in the room and, uh, and Claudia, if, because I put you on the spot earlier on, um, it would be great if, if you have any, if you've got any questions, because I, I, you, I'm gonna pick on you first of all. Thank you very much for your presentation. It was really interesting. And it was really important for me to see, uh, to learn more about the In Hope program and uh, the IC cam. I didn't know most of the things you said. Um, yeah, but I don't have any questions right now. Thanks. That's okay. Now we've broken the ice, so hopefully now it will be a flood of questions. <laughs> but maybe not. <laughs> so um, what I want to do is, um, I just want to give, because we were originally, we we're actually bang on time, funnily enough. Um, and I just want to give people the opportunity to ping up any questions they may have. And you know, give it a few seconds. Okay, the organizer is just saying to, uh, we need to wrap this up. So thank you very much, uh, Sandra, for the lovely comment. Um, I don't know if I, anything I've ever done was beautiful, but uh, thank you very much anyway. Um, so with that guys, I want to thank everybody for their attention. Um, I hope you take on board all of the things I said and uh, we leave it there and have a good day and stay safe.